And then when the last ten nights come, make sure you stay awake a little bit extra. Make sure you do on those nights what you do not do for the rest of the year. Make sure the five odd nights in particular you put in a little bit more effort. Whatever you're able to do. And if you do so, you've shown Allah you want to be in the race. You've shown Allah you are showing respect to the signs of Allah. Also, dear brothers and sisters, some practical advice. One of the biggest issues we see is that people burn out in the first week or 10 days of Ramadan. They do more than they're able to do. And then they're not able to continue so that the last 10 they lose out. Realize there is a sprint at the end of the race and all of us need to be sprinting at the end. Realize this. Put it in your mind that my most energetic time has to be the last 10 nights. Put it in your mind, that's when I'm going to do my best. So if you feel that you can only do so much, then calculate it out so that that much that you do will be in the last 10. Do not bite more than you can chew, as the saying goes. You don't want to go down in the last 10. You want to rise up in the last 10. 10. So my humble advice to all of you, there are five areas we should concentrate on. Five areas very simple. You memorize them. Don't worry. Number one, Salah. Look at your Salah right now today and yesterday and from tomorrow increase. Simple as that. Increase all of these five. Number one, Salah. Whatever is your constant level of Salah, you need to increase the bar even if it's just by a little. But it has to be increased. If you're already the Fard and the Sunnah, then pray the Tarawih and the Qiyam. If you are of the people who are praying to Hajjid, look at your quality as well. And it's not just about quantity, it's about quality. If you're not praying five times a day, well then if you were to master the practice and the ritual of praying your five fard in this month of Ramadan, you have accomplished much more than anything else. Concentrate on this one goal of perfecting your five daily salawat in this month. So, number one, Salah. Number two is Quran. This is the month of the Quran. Perhaps some of us do not touch the whole Quran except during this month. So be it. Aim to try to finish one full Quran. But, dear brothers and sisters, in all honesty, if you cannot finish an entire Quran, then finish whatever you can. Don't just give up. Don't compete with the Hufaz. They can do an entire juice in 15 minutes. I understand. Most of us cannot do that. Don't look to the Hufaz and say, I can't do that. Okay, do what you can. Even if you recite 10 minutes a day, it's better than nothing. Even if you recite five days in the month is better than nothing. I'm just asking you to raise the bar. Whatever you did yesterday, tomorrow, has to be more. That's what I'm asking you. So number two is Quran. Whatever you're doing, put it into your schedule. Every day I'm going to read one page, two pages, five pages, whatever you can do so that you're raising the bar. Number three, Dikr and Dua. Dikr and Dua. Increase your Dikr and Dua. And that's the easiest ritual. You don't need to have Wadu. You don't need to face the Qibla. You can just be waiting in your car at a traffic light. You can be in between meetings. You can be in between phone calls. Just whatever you can do. Before you break the fast, do some special dua. Realize that is the most blessed time of dua. And Allah accepts the dua of the one who is fasting when he's breaking his fast. So increase your dua. Number 4. Charity. Anas ibn Malik said the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the most generous of all people, 
and in the month of Ramadan, his generosity exceeded all bounds. Charity, plan out your charity. Try to give some sadda, if not daily, at least weekly, and especially in the last 10 days. If you have $1,000 you want to give, spread it out over the month so that you're giving a little bit every few days. If you have $5,000, spread that out. Don't just give on any one night, no, and spread out the causes as well. Diversify the causes. Give some to your mosque. Give some to Fukara and Masakin. Give some to orphans. Give some to other causes. So during this month, do some hunting research. Which charities I should give to. And give whatever little you can. So increase your charity in this month. And last point for this, of course much can be said. Last point for this, look at your manners and concentrate. How can I improve my manners? Our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him explicitly linked Ramadan with improving our manners. He said when one of you comes, when somebody comes and gets angry at you, then respond, control your anger, control your manners. So Ramadan, look at the weaknesses. Where am I weak in my manners? What is my weak point in terms of my temper, in terms of my tongue, in terms of other things? and try to work. You're not going to become perfect, dear brothers and sisters. Allah didn't create us to be perfect. We're not angels. The goal is not perfection, but the goal is you try, the goal is you put in the effort. And whatever effort you put in this month, Allah will see that effort. Once again, five areas. Number one, the Salah. The most important thing. Number two, Quran. Increase it every single day, whatever it is. Number three, Dua and Dikr. Number four, Charity. Number five, your own personal manners. See what you can do, brothers and sisters. This is the month of Ramadan. This is the month of Rama. This is the month of Magfira. The only person who will not be forgiven is the one who didn't want to be forgiven. And that's why our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was climbing on the member the day before Ramadan. He was climbing on the member, and he said, Amin three times. Then he said, Do you want to know why I said Amin? He explained, Jibreel came to me and said to me something and then said, Say, Amin Ya Rasul Allah. One of the three things Jibreel said, O oh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Any one of your Oma who is alive when Ramadan comes and does not manage to have all of his sins be forgiven, that person may perish. Say, Amin, and the Prophet said, Amin. Think about it. Why would dua be given against the one who does not be forgiven in Ramadan? Why? Because anybody who desires Magfira shall be forgiven. Anybody who wants to be forgiven shall be forgiven. So the only one who is not going to be forgiven is the one who didn't put the slightest amount of effort. The one who did nothing in this month. And nobody amongst us will do nothing in this month. Do something, whatever it is, do whatever you can, whatever little you can do. And thank Allah that you're doing something. Ask Allah for more. Try to do even more. But do not be discouraged. Do not be disheartened. If you cannot compete with the best of the best, in Allah's Rama, you don't have to compete with the best of the best. You only have to compete with yourself. And if you win yourself in this race, then you will, inshallah, be a winner.